In today's video, we're making a heartwarming carrot ginger soup that you can make year round. Made with just a few good for you ingredients like carrots, onions, ginger, and garlic, the soup is packed with antioxidants and anti inflammatory properties. I'm going to show you how to make it in two different ways. First, I will make it by roasting carrots in the oven. And then second, I will show you how to make it on the stovetop. I'll be honest, the version made with roasted carrots is my favorite because of the complex flavors that is caused by caramelization that have this in the oven. But I wanted to show you the stovetop method just in case you're planning to make this during the holidays when your oven is in high demand and you have other things to cook in it. The good thing is that both ways take about the same amount of time from start to finish. Unlike most carrot ginger soup recipes, this recipe uses no heavy cream to make it super creamy. However, in the end, we will splurge a little bit and top it off with a dollop of creme fraiche to cut through some of the spiciness of ginger and balance out all the rest of the flavors. To bring you this recipe, I am partnering with Vermont Creamery to show you an example of how to use creme fraiche and easily elevate a recipe from mm, to amazing. As always, detailed timestamps and the link to the full recipe are below. Feel free to roam around as you like. Now, go grab some carrots and ginger and let's make a soup that is guaranteed to impress. Start by preheating your oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. Rinse one and a half pounds of carrots under cold running water. Cut the tops off and peel them one by one. Alternatively, you can scrub them with a brush and skip the peeling part, especially if your carrots are organic. Cut them into small one inch pieces and place on a sheet pan lined with parchment paper. Drizzle with two tablespoons of vegetable oil and sprinkle with one teaspoon of kosher salt and a half a teaspoon of black pepper. Toss to make sure that the carrots are fully coated. Roast it in the oven for about 30 minutes. Meanwhile, prepare the rest of the ingredients. Cut a medium-sized onion into small chunks. Grate three cloves of garlic using a microplane grater. Peel a two-inch fresh ginger and grate it again using a microplane grater. You will need about two teaspoons of grated fresh ginger for this recipe. And if you don't have a micro microplane grater, you can also mince them finely using a sharp knife. Next, heat a tablespoon of vegetable oil in a saucepan over medium heat. Add in the onion and saute for about five to six minutes or until translucent. Stir in the garlic and ginger and saute for another minute or so. Pour in two cups of vegetable broth two cups of water, a teaspoon of kosher salt, and a half a teaspoon of black pepper. Give it a quick stir, put the lid on, bring it to a boil, and then let it simmer for 10 minutes or so. When the carrots are roasted, place them into the pot, give it a stir, and let it simmer for about four to five minutes. Off the heat, Carefully puree the vegetables using an immersion blender until everything is nice and smooth. Put it back on the stove and bring it to a boil one last time before serving. Before we move on to talking about the fun stuff, the toppings, I want to also show you how to make this carrot ginger soup on the stove top. The process is pretty similar except the roasting part and in this version you can simply chop all vegetables in chunks because they will all be cooked together and eventually be pureed. So no need for grating the ginger and garlic. Perhaps you can think of the stovetop method being easier and more straightforward with the same ingredients list. Heat a tablespoon of vegetable oil in a saucepan over medium heat. Add in the onion, and carrots, saute for about five to six minutes. Stir in garlic and ginger and saute for about a minute or so. 
pour in two cups of vegetable broth, two cups of water, a teaspoon of kosher salt, and the half a teaspoon of ground black pepper. Give it a stir, put the lid on, and let it cook, keeping a close eye on it for about 30 minutes or until a knife inserted into one of the carrots comes in and out easily. As we did it with the roasted version, carefully puree using an immersion blender. Give it a taste and add in more seasoning if necessary. Finish it off with a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar to brighten the flavors. Now, if you don't have an immersion blender, you can also use a food processor or an upright blender, though it is really hot, so be very careful. When it is time to serve it, ladle into a bowl and top it off with a dollop of cream fresh for some extra creamy deliciousness. If I'm serving these during the fall or winter months, I also top it off with a handful of pumpkin seeds. Or if I'm serving this during the warmer months, I use fresh herbs like cilantro or Italian parsley for some additional color. Before I let you go, a couple of things. One, I use vegetable stock here, but if you want, you can use chicken stock as well. And you know I use a combination of broth and water, but if you want, you can use all broth or all water. Obviously, the flavors would change a bit, but it's totally up to your taste buds. Two, I personally think that four cups of liquid produces a good level of thickness, but if you want to make it a little bit thinner, you can use an additional cup of liquid, and vice versa. Three, while I think the addition of creme fraiche takes the soup to a whole new level, if you're serving this to a crowd following a vegan or dairy-free diet, you can also top it off with coconut cream. Four, as you saw, I made a very basic version of the soup. If you want, you can also add in some warm spices like ground turmeric, cumin, and even coriander for some additional spiciness. And finally, if you want to make this in an electric pressure cooker like an Instant Pot, I made sure to include the instructions in the recipe on my site, and the link is in the description below. There you have it, friends, a healthy and creamy carrot ginger soup that you can make in under 40 minutes from start to finish. If you like this recipe, be sure to check out my butternut squash soup recipe I shared a few years back. It is a very similar soup that uses some of the same techniques I used here. If you end up making this recipe, please snap a photo and share it with me on Instagram so that I can see your creations. And if you enjoyed this video or learned a thing or two, hit the like button and share it with your friends. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you next time.